let's uh, go to Yola now, where the deputy governor, uh, governor elect in that election joins me live now. It's rare occasion to find a woman into that kind of position, um, especially in that part of the country. And now uh, is someone who has retired our position of being a vice chancellor to take up the role of a running mate to uh, the uh, governor. Ramado Fintiri. Either way, it was being a very unusual and a very uh, historic moment for the people of Adamawa State because the, uh, the runner-up in that election is also a woman. Well, let's welcome uh, to the program tonight the deputy governorship elect, uh, governor elect of Adamawa State, Professor uh, Kaleptawa Ferrauta. Thank you so much indeed for joining us tonight on the program and congratulations on your victory. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, let me begin. How does this come to you? You made a decision to resign your position as a vice chancellor, taking up that onerous task of being a politician, a running mate to a governor uh, in your state. Was that more like uh, um, an academic suicide for someone who had spent all her life in the classroom? Well, yes and no. Life is about taking risks. And whatever you do in life amounts to risks. And I knew that when I left the classroom and the university environment to take up being the running mate of the sitting governor, it's either I win or I lose. And in life, whatever comes your way, one, I believe in the fact that God orders people's destinies. And secondly, that whatever comes your way, it's a risk. And whatever you take up to do in life, as long as you believe in God and believe in yourself, God will sort it out for you. I mean, so I'll come to... Uh cultural, religious milieu of the northeastern region of the country, and especially politics. It is an mm -hmm. area that most women, especially those of them that have done so well for themselves, like yourself, we dare not go into. And in fact, there mm -hmm. hasn't been this kind of leverage being given to the women folk for this kind of exalted position to be the second person in the state um, what was the underpinning issue? Was it the governor that approached you, or what exactly preempted or prompted you? Well, the community prompted me. My people prompted me, and of course, my boss did. So how does the victory come to you? The glory belongs to God. It's a terrain I'm not familiar with. Having grown in the university system from being a graduate assistant to a professor, it's a terrain that I've never thought of trading on. And when the victory came, of course, I look back, I know that it's not of me that have won this victory. It is God. So I return all the glory to God and I thank the entire Adama family, because Adama State is a big family, the entire Adama family for making it a reality. What are you bringing to the table? Well, I've been a classroom teacher. I've been the commissioner of education in Adama State. By the grace of God, I've served as the executive chairman of the Adama State University Basic Education. And by his grace, I just resigned my position as the vice chancellor of Adama State University, where I served for five years. Educationally, I know that the girl child needs a lot of help in Adama State. As one that has grown to this position, I'm bringing to the table the fact that the girl child needs to be allowed to go the length she can go, especially when she has the ability to go that far, like the boy child. And also to bring on the table the fact that a fellow woman or any other woman, marriage and early pregnancies should not be anything that will stop a young girl from going to school. Because 
As the Commissioner of Education during my time in 2015, I observed the fact that many teenage girls dropped out of school and could not make it later in life. And I feel a pain that that should not be a place where a girl will stop because she has become a mother too early in life. So I'm bringing to the table the fact that women need to be encouraged, the girl child needs to be encouraged because when you educate a woman, she does not only contribute to the community and the society, even her family life is different from a woman that is not educated. So my passion will be to ensure that the girl child is carried along, the women folk are carried along, and we are also partakers and partners in the governance in Adama State. Interesting. Um, uh, this program is a woman-friendly program because it's a political program, and not all the time we do find women as guests on the program. And those of those uh, people who have accused the program of not really giving women a voice, that's not <laughs> true. Uh, don't worry. Uh, we are women-friendly platform right here. But, you know, we Thank see you. how shy women could be from politics, and mm -hmm. that's why when uh, we got this opportunity to speak with you, one is very excited, and I'm wondering tonight, would you like to uh, try the luck of after these four years, um, if uh, they, because I know there are possibilities of court cases and all of that, if it favors you and your principal, just maybe mm. you might push to run for governor of Adama State next time. Is it possible in the next four years? Sean, when we reach that bridge, we cross it for now and we're here. That bridge in politics is a very popular one, and politicians always <laughs> cross it. But I'm asking you because I know, I mean, I, I'm very sure that you have a lot of fun, and that a, a lot of, if a couple of you have broken the ground in Adama State, it's not going to be alien mm -hmm. to anybody again. Ms. Binani mm -hmm. has tried it, mm -hmm. and you are mm -hmm. also in the fray, and perhaps mm -hmm. maybe this will encourage, because you've talked about girl child and the, the, the mm -hmm. female gender in Adama State, mm -hmm. This might be some kind of encouragement. Is this a possibility of seeing a professor, uh, so, uh, your person, becoming the next governor of Adama State? Would you like to take that task? For, for now, when we reach that bridge, we cross it. Let's take the deputy governorship for now. The women for now, we take the governorship, we take the second place. When we reach that bridge, the women will decide. All right, we'll wait for that popular bridge that politicians always wait yes, to cross. Sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, Let, let's get into, uh, into some of the issues. Um, we, mm -hmm. we saw what happened in Adama State uh, and uh, that very interesting incident where the, the REC made that decision, contrary to the electoral law. For you, um, how, does, how did that come to you, considering the level and the growth of our democracy uh, in, especially in this fourth republic? Well, I think there are all issues that are under investigation now. And it will, as a citizen, it did not come to me, well, maybe to say as a surprise, because the political terrain, like I said, is different from the classroom. But I also know that I make and other people have grown to the level that as Nigerians, we have grown to trust them to do the right thing. So even when it happened, we believed God that the right thing would be done. Does, has this hurt the, um, the cultural and uh, the issues of unity in Adama State in any form? Well, I wouldn't say so. But if you ask my personal opinion, my opinion is that Adama has said been one family. No, no lines between us, wherever you're coming from. Whatever you believe in, whatever your creed, your faith, whatever part of Adama State you're coming from, we've lived for centuries as one big family. Living, celebrating our festivities together, marrying each other, and living happily. And I think my call at this point to Adama people is the fact that Adama is bigger than us as individuals. 
Adama State will outlive all of us as politicians or as individuals. So at this point, I want to call on all indigenous and even non-indigenous that are living in Adama State. We should know that the state has to be one or the state needs to be in a whole piece before anybody can emerge as a leader. And therefore, whatever we're doing, I think the essence of all we are running around for is to ensure that this state remains as a whole, not in pieces. So my plea to every person living in Adama State, and even those Adama people that are not living here in Adama with us, is the fact that Adama is bigger than all of us, and we should put our hands to build Adama State because we are one big family. There is no line dividing any of us, and we cannot create those lines today. Do you think that it is necessary for the state government to create uh, somewhat an avenue where uh, those who have been affected, because um, experts have analyzed that the election had terribly hurt the unity of the people of Adama State, and a lot of people had felt, uh, I mean, a bit of an infighting, uh, seeing uh, people in different local government areas uh, with different political uh, uh, leanings that are now divided uh, 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 along party lines. Do you think it is necessary for the government to, after the inauguration on the 29th of May, to create an avenue where you can f uh, find people in the state to unite them, to, uh, uh, to realign people, and to mend fences? Is that possible? It's possible and it's very important. And that's the essence of humanity. That yes, it's human to err. We might have erred, we might have hurt each other in the process of the politicking. Now that is over, we should put it behind us as brothers and sisters, mend our fences because the things that unite us are more than the things that divide us. And if we focus on the things that unite us as Adama indigenous and as citizens of this state and Nigeria, we'll build a better Adama state for ourselves and for children yet unborn. So I believe in the fact that it will be good, and I will speak with my boss to see where we can raise either groups or go on some kind of talks with people to ensure that we mend every fence that has been broken during this politicking. And if it goes to a level where you tell people, I'm sorry for what happened or what transpired, why not? We're human beings. We can, do, we can be wrong and people can also wrong us. And if God forgives us, I think the only thing is that he teaches us also to forgive one another. I believe that is the way to go, to ensure that Adama remains as one big family. That's my call. Um, there were some allegations, though, that there, there were some untoward and nocturnal meetings which happened at the government house. And I wanted to find out if you were present at those meetings. The PDP were alleging that uh, there were some connivance with INEC officials. Are you aware of those kind of nocturnal meetings which were uh, said I'm to have been aware. held to, uh, to uh, subvert and manipulate the elections? A lot of things happened in the government house which they say you and your principal uh, connived with INEC allegedly to manipulate the elections. Were you aware? Were you there at the day? I'm not aware of such meetings. But the allegations are that you and your principal, I mean, there were connivance to rig the election. Is that true? That's not true, Shane. But what, what can we take home? What is the truth of the matter? The truth of the matter is INEC as an umpire has done their job. All right. Let, let me uh, take you up on the fact that in all of this, what lesson do you think we can take away? Because this was an election that stood out, and there are a lot of lessons that this perhaps would teach the whole nation and our democracy and posterity. What lesson, what is the biggest lesson, uh, if, you, if you identify one, that we can take away from our governorship election and the supplementary election especially? The biggest lesson I would want us to take away is the fact that leadership comes from God. And at any point we contest for leadership, we should allow God to do the final thing. And secondly, 
the second lesson I want us to take away is the fact that INEC as an umpire, since we have put them to do the work, we should also believe in them and trust that they will do the right thing so that citizens are satisfied with whatever they do. So in whatever things we are doing, as citizens of Nigeria and citizens of Adama State, the lessons we should draw from what transpired in Adama State is the fact that God gives leadership and that INEC has been trusted to do the announcements or to do whatever they are supposed to do as the umpire. We should allow them to do it through the proper process. So uh, on a final note, how would you like to uh, be identified and remembered uh, as well, I mean, as a deputy governor, knowing uh, uh, very well that that role uh, is usually taking in trust of the principal's interest. And uh, sometimes they call it the spare tire. It, you, you are the beck and call of the principal. You can do just as much as the principal wants you to do. You can go as far as the principal wants you to go. And we've seen instances in this country where deputy governorship have been relegated to the background. I mean, does this give you any sort of worry? No, sure. I'm not worried. I'm learning. I'm coming from the classroom and I'm willing to learn. But what kind of deputy governor would you like to be? Of course, a deputy governor that would put hands together with the principal to build a better Adama state. Will he also be the one that could tell the principal that he is wrong and tell him to his face when he's wrong? Are you Why that not? blunt? Yes, sir. My principal is the type that wants spiritual argument. I've worked with him in several positions, and he would take superior argument when you have your facts. Thank you so much indeed. Professor Caleb Tawa Ferrauta is a deputy governor elect of Adama State. I wish you the very best, and it's an honor to have you. Um, if, there, if there is a bell, I will ring one because whenever I have a woman on the program, I'm always very excited. It's very uh, unusual because we always have um, male guests on the program. But thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. Thank you, Shell. Most grateful. Thank you.